Hello, everyone, and welcome to our pre-Passover hangout. We're so excited to see that some of you hopped on to join us and to welcome our awesome special guests. My name is Olivia Ziegler. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Um, I'm Jack Himes, and I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we are going to be hosting this tonight and interviewing our amazing guests. So getting on that note, um, to introduce the stars that we have tonight. First, we have Adam Cantor. He is an award-winning acclaimed actor and singer from Long Island, New York. He graduated from Northwestern University where he majored in theater and soon after college landed a starring role portraying Mark Cohen, Cohen in the closing cast of the Broadway musical Rent. On Broads also appeared in the musical Next to Normal. He starred in the off-Broadway revival of the musical The Last Five Years and has also appeared off-Broadway in the musicals Avenue Q and Falling for Eve. He portrayed Motel Kamzoli at Kamzoil in the Broadway revival of Fiddler on the Roof at the Broadway Theater. And in 2017, he joined the musical The Band's Visit as Telephone Guy for its transfer to Broadway um, and in 2018, while still in the band's visit, he helped create Story Course, which is an interactive musical theater dinner in New York City that tells the stories of immigrants. So everyone in chat or with your reactions or just with your faces, let's first give a warm welcome to Adam Nanter. Thank you. I don't know if you can hear me, but thank you. Um, and next off is Benj yeah, Pasek. So uh, Benj is an award-winning and mm -hmm. okay, uh, award-winning and acclaimed songwriter who has composed independently and with teams for musical theater, films, and television. Originally from the Philadelphia area, Benj graduated from the University of Michigan. His works include *A Christmas Story*, *Dogfight*, *Edges*, *Dear Evan Hansen*, and *James and the Giant Peach*. His original songs have been have been featured on NBC's Smash and in the films La La Land, for which he won both the Golden Globe and Academy Award for Best Original Song for the song City of Stars and The Greatest Showman. The song This Is Me from The Greatest Showman also received an Oscar nomination for the Best Original Song and it became an inspiring anthem for the Pyeongchang Olympic Winter Games. His work on original music Dear Evan Hansen has received widespread critical acclaim and earned him the Tony Award for Best Original Score. Welcome, Benj. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. And uh, I'm so excited that you're a Philadelphia guy, too, because uh, you're from my hometown. So hi, BBYO. Hi from all of us. Again, we are so excited to have both of you. And thank you again for giving your time to spend talking to us. Um, now that we have those intros out of the way, we are Again, stoked to have time to talk to you, explore a little bit about how you celebrate Passover um, as we head into that time of year and learn some more about this incredible project that you're sharing with the world for the first time tonight on BBYO On Demand. So if y'all are both ready, we will just move into those questions. Sounds good. Let's do it, guys. Yes. We're ready for you. Awesome. So to just hop into things, we hear that you have a special announcement to share with us tonight. Uh, so tell us about your Saturday Night Seder initiative. How is it created and what is the biggest thing that you hope it achieves? Well, first, should we tell you like what it is, what's happening? Because it's really exciting and I don't know if everybody- Tell them what's happening, know. Adam. They're going to want to know. You got to tell them. Okay. Are you all ready for this? Are you all I can't hear you, but I'm not going to be able to hear you anyway. So on Saturday night, this Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. if you're on the West Coast, and I don't know about in the middle, uh, <laughs> tune in to SaturdayNightSater.com for this live extravaganza celebrating the story of Exodus told in very new ways by a whole group of incredible celebrities, including, are you Adam, ready? Who's gonna, be, who's gonna be a part of it, Adam? Okay, we've got, do you all know Ben Platt? Okay, yeah. Give me some hands if you all know Adina Menzel. Show me some hands. Yeah, I see somebody screaming, but I can't hear you, but I appreciate it. Melanie Halbert, I see the screaming. I see the wicked poster <laughs> behind you, girl. 
Oh my God. Also, Wait, what about, what about Beanie Feldstein? Beanie Feldstein. Yes. Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen. Anne France is going to be a part of it from Queer Eye. From Queer Eye, um, that's Queer right. We love Anne. Who's going to join us from Stranger Things? Who watches Things? Stranger Things? Show me some hands about Stranger Things. Anybody like yeah. Stranger Things? Yeah. Um, Finn. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Rachel Brosnahan, Miss Maisel herself, is going to be with us. The amazing Miss Maisel. Um, Cynthia Erivo and Shoshana Bean are going to join us. Um, yeah, Darren well, Chris and Skylar Aston and uh, Billy Eichner. Um, Billy so Porter. We are going to have Billy Porter is going to be there. Right, um, that's so, right. Yeah, we're super excited. So uh, basically what it is, is is we're basically reinterpreting um, the traditional Passover Seder with a bunch of uh, friends and colleagues and, and stars that we've never even met, but that we just reached out to and that we were so excited um, who, uh, who would uh, join us and tell a reinterpretation of the Passover Seder. And so we're putting it together now and we're filming with people and we're rehearsing and we're getting ready for the big show. And we're so excited to share it all with you. It's gonna stream uh, uh, on Saturday night at 8 p.m. on saturdaynightseder.com. That is amazing. And if you couldn't see, there's so much excitement across the board <laughs> for all of those stars that are gonna be included. Um, amazing. So obviously that is a yeah, um, obviously that's a huge, huge project um, that is a little bit new this year for Passover, but we also want to hear about your own personal experiences. So what were your favorite Passover memories as teens, or do you have any funny stories of celebrating Passover growing up that you want to share? Ben, do you want to go first? Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, I'll say this. So, so my family... Um, my family is very theatrical, and that's maybe why I, I uh, started writing. Um, but they would always make our living room into, you know how like the Jews wandered for 40 years in the desert? They would literally hang up sheets and towels everywhere in my, um, <laughs> in my living room. And they would make it into a tent, and they would make everybody sit on the floor, and they would literally pretend like we were in a desert. And like it was like literally sheets from my bed like hanging from the ceiling. Um, and my mom would wear like a pharaoh hat and they would like take it very, very seriously. Um, so they always kind of made like a theatrical version of the Seder. And so, um, you know, I loved that and it was always hilarious. And, and oh, you know, it's uh, another thing that we did, which might be fun in, in your homes too. We always voted for a Moses and a, pa and a pharaoh of the year. So we'd go around and we'd be like, who is, who in like, society has really exhibited the most Moses-like qualities <laughs> and who has exhibited the most Pharaoh-like qualities. And, you know, this year there are a lot of Pharaohs to pick from, but there are a lot of Moses too. So <laughs> be on the lookout. What about you, Adam? Uh, yeah, my satyrs were always filled with music. Uh, the We had a long table and there were like, you know, Morocco, you know, like things that what are they what are those called maracas and like triangles and things that would make noise. So as a kid, we would love to, you know, just shake them and play them. And it was just filled with noise and music. And I come from a line of of cantors, my great grandfather, his father. And so we have like their original. Wait, when you say cantor, you're saying like your last name or like actual cantors? I come from a line of actual cantors. Chazen. Oh, my God. So, you know, my ancestors who emigrated uh, were, were singers, were cantors. And so um, we have their original cantorial music that we, that we would open up and sing. Uh, so it was always filled with music. Those and we also have like surprise guests. Uh, my grandma was uh, and, and is just a fabulous woman who makes fabulous friends. And we, I remember a few years we had Willy Wonka himself, Gene Wilder. I don't know if you all have No ever way. Are you serious? Yep. He was at a bunch of our satyrs. And as a kid who loved Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, having like sitting next to Willy Wonka was like pretty awesome. That's crazy. And I uh, only had like my mom pretending to be Pharaoh. Like, <laughs> you beat me. No, I mean, your Seder sounds amazing. So, so yeah, Passover is very special to, to, both, to both of us. Awesome. Those sound like some great traditions. Um, we know that you both grew up uh, involved in the Jewish community. Benj, I'm right down the street from Kaiserman JCC. And Love that. Love that. 
and my parents know your parents from doing Jewish stuff. So don't all, don't all parents know everyone else's parents from doing Jewish stuff? That's like the most universal thing I've ever heard in my freaking life. Like we're yeah. probably cousins and we don't even know it, Jack. <laughs> I wish. But um, <laughs> how have your Jewish values influenced your careers in moments like this when you choose to take action for the greater good? Adam, is this a I mean, me question or a you question? What I love about the question is that, question. okay. What I love about the question is that it sort of has the answer in it, I think. You know, we, we grew up with this notion of tzedakah and giving back, and it just feels like there's a lot to give back to right now. And uh, the, the Seder, I don't know if we mentioned this, that the funds from the Seder will go toward, uh, you will have an option to donate while you watch. It's a free program to watch, but if you want, you can donate to the CDC Foundation, uh, which is supporting uh, health workers on the front lines of, of fighting this, this plague that we're living in. So uh, it was important when we, when we gathered all these awesome musicians and actors and that when we were writing the script, um, that we really kept that in mind, that the ultimate function of this whole experience is to raise money for the CDC Foundation. And that does, I think, I, I think that does go back to, you know, this notion of tzedakah that was instilled in us from a young age. Yeah, and uh, one other thing too is like, you know, BBYO is such an amazing thing because you guys are forming a community, you guys are getting to know each other. But, you know, when you grow up as a Jewish kid, um, sometimes you can feel like an other, right? And like, that's very true for, for, uh, you know, for me and, and uh, I know a lot of people and it gives you an outside perspective on the world, which at the time when you're younger can feel like a real burden. But when you grow up, you're like, oh my gosh, I have a unique perspective. And it gives you, I think, an empathy muscle to be identifying with other people who have grown up as others. Um, and so I think it's really important to like, you know, one of the things that we talk about in Passover, which I really think is amazing is you retell the Passover story to remember when you were slaves in the land of Egypt. Now, like that sounds very literal, but when you think about how amazing that is, it's like we used to, you know, have be in very difficult times. And it's our responsibility now that we have a sense of privilege and that we, ha you know, have been lifted out of that kind of bondage to help anybody who's in that same kind of situation. So when you look around and you think about the people in your life who don't have the same kind of privilege that you do, you know, it's your responsibility to help them. And that's what the Passover Seder is all about. And that's what I think is very special about it. Um, and, you know, thinking as a Jewish person, how do you how do you sort of flex that muscle and say, okay, I need to remember that my people have gone through a lot of difficult things. And when I see other people that are in difficult situations, I need to stand up for them and I need to be there um, doing the right thing and um, fighting the right fight um, because it, it could have been my people, you know, and uh, I think that's a really, really wonderful part of Passover and part of what makes me excited about, about celebrating this holiday. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you both for that. Um, that kind of leads perfectly into our next question. So while we're quarantined and in this period of isolation, a lot of people want to make a difference as much as they can. So beyond just going to the Saturday Night Seder, what are some ways that you might recommend that teens worldwide can help out during this unprecedented time? Or is there anything that you've seen people doing that has been really inspirational to you that you'd like to share with us? Wow. Adam, you wanna hit this? Or you... <laughs> you start, Ben, do you have anything that comes yeah, to Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we're, we're all isolated, right? Like I'm really into the, we've been thinking a lot about Passover because we've been planning this, this um, Saturday night Seder, uh, which by the way, just to clarify, you don't have to like sign up for it. You just go to the website at 8 PM on Saturday and you just click a link and it'll, you can just watch it there. Um, but I've been thinking a lot about, uh, I've been thinking a lot about like what people can be doing and, you know, we're all literally in confinement, you know, which is what, Passover is about, you know, it's about slavery and the idea of we're literally in confinement right now. And it's and Passover is also a holiday about going from winter to spring. And right now we're, we're literally in our homes and we're communicating digitally. Reach out to people. You know, there are so many people who probably feel alone right now, who feel scared, who feel nervous. Um, and they might not be the people that you expect. Um, they might be people who are, you know, posting things on Instagram and they seem like they're having a silly time, but like they might be having a tough time. They might be having anxiety or depression or whatever it is. And something so small that you can do 
is to reach out to a person who's literally in confinement right now and who might be scared and be like, hey, I'm here. If you want to talk, I'm around. You know, think of the person who most needs um, that kind of help and who's in, 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 in most need and, and just like kind of raise your hand and let them know that you're there for them. And something that is such a small act can make such a big difference. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever had an experience where, you know, someone did something that you remember years later and to them, they probably wouldn't even remember that they did it. But for you, you're like, oh my God, that was really meaningful. You have the opportunity to do that for other people, especially in this time when there's a lot of confusion and a lot of sadness and a lot of uncertainty. So, you know, use your voice and reach out to people. Um, and, and you might think that it's a very, very small act, but it could be really, really meaningful for somebody who needs it. I think that is such, such great advice. Um, and, you know, the flip side of all of this is I think, at least in, in my communities, I'm seeing a lot of um, subtextual pressure to like write the next great American novel or, you know, create something incredible. And it's okay sometimes to just sit and feel sad. That's okay. It's a really hard time that we're going through right now. And it's okay not to produce every day or not, you know, to, to sometimes just sit with yourself. And that, that I think some really valuable things can, can also come out of that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. Um, you guys already kind of already answered this question before I asked it, which is cool, but um, what are you hoping that, everyone who tunes in on Saturday can do um, that night or in the days that follow to help the charity that you've chosen? You know, so we chose this charity, which is the CDC Foundation. So it, it goes uh, to, it's money for people who are on the front lines of helping to fight this plague or people who are being affected by the, you know, this, this literal plague that we're going through this coronavirus. So hopefully, you know, what we've tried to do is, is try to make Passover a holiday that people think about and think about the meaning of it. I mean, it's, it's really such a gift to have this holiday come right now because it really makes you think about, you know, how you can, um, how you can help people who are, who are feeling in that position. But I also think it's a holiday that talks about like, you know, in, in a really, really scary time, miracles can happen good can happen. And in a time of uncertainty, you will get through it, you know? So really what I, I, I want is, uh, people to take away from it is to know that there is such incredible wisdom and um, such incredible meaning and, and, and lessons in what it means to be a Jewish person that, you know, we can be talking about and using Passover to talk about. And also that there's hope, you know, and that if we share that hope um, and we let people know that uh, we're going to be able to cross the the metaphoric red sea and we'll wander through the desert but we'll get the, out on the other side um i think a lot of people just need to be reminded that like it's going to be okay and if you can be that positive message for somebody and you can take some of the story from passover um and you can share that with people that's a really big gift awesome so back to a bit of a more personal note again <laughs> Obviously, the circumstances for Passover this year are a little bit different. Um, so we want to know how you and your friends or families are celebrating this year. Are you holding a virtual Seder? Are you trying to adapt some of those fun traditions you were talking about earlier? What are your plans? Yeah, we're doing a, we're doing a virtual Seder uh, tomorrow night on Zoom. Yeah, my family too. So I don't, I don't know if they're building a tent this year, but <laughs> we'll cross our fingers and we'll see if my mom can get that together. But yeah, we're doing a virtual Seder. And then, you know, Adam and I are really like working every day to prepare for Saturday and try to make that a really special event. Um, and yeah, I've never felt more in the Passover spirit because I've been thinking about it for the last couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, on a personal level, I'm going to be zooming in. And um, the good part about zooming in or out of a Seder is that, you know, you can put yourself on mute um, uh, or, you know, <laughs> Turn the video off when you need to, you know, when, when the meal gets a little bit too long. Uh, so we'll see if I do any of that tomorrow night. Sounds fun. Um, so oh. finally, um, is there anything else that you guys want us to know about Saturday's special event and how else we can be a, um, part of the fun? Yeah. Uh, actually, if you can't, for whatever reason, if you can't 
tune in on Saturday to watch live. Uh, it, you, can, you can watch it afterwards. It'll, be, it'll live in the digital universe. It'll be on YouTube. I'm sure it'll be on our website. Um, so we hope you can tune in to watch live on Saturday, but have no fear if for whatever, whatever reason you can't. Yeah, and it's just really, you know, I hope uh, we, we kind of tried to make this for people like you and people like us and people who just kind of need a lift in spirit. And so share, you know, the information about it with your friends, because I think it's going to be a really, really fun time. And, you know, the biggest thing that I don't want to have happen is people be like, oh, my God, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I would wish I would have been able to watch it, you know, and being able to watch it. And, you know, when you're like on Twitter and you're getting to watch something and you get to comment and say whatever you want to say or be texting your friends, because it's going to be, a, a, you know, sort of a live experience. So we just want everybody who uh, you guys think would appreciate uh, this kind of crazy uh, Seder interpretation to know that it's happening and um, and yeah enjoy it yeah spread the word awesome well thank you both so much for taking the time to plan all of this out and to join us tonight um, I think I speak for all of us when I say that we are so glad to have you and are so excited to join you on Saturday night so just to remind you all um, this Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, you can join the Saturday Night Seder, um, both with the link that they provided, or you can find it on bbyo.org slash on demand. And you'll be seeing plenty of marketing and graphics that you can share with your friends to get them involved and to bring a little light into your life, your family's life, or your friends' lives this Passover. So, Hopefully none of you want to miss that incredible lineup. Um, <laughs> and we can't wait to see the two of you as well as all of us on this call and plenty more on Saturday night. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us. And we are incredibly excited for this weekend. Oh, absolutely. And guys, thank you so much. Um, this means a lot that you guys all tuned in. And uh, if any of you guys are quarantined with your parents, um, just be be nice to them because it's hard for everybody right now. So, you know, uh, just 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 be very loving uh, and and know that we're all going to get through this. And uh, I'm really glad that you guys all have each other and you guys have this amazing community and um, and have an amazing amazing Passover. Hag Sameach, everybody. Hag Sameach. Bye. Thank you. Bye.